In this movie, I'll show you how to create some custom guides using the rectangular grid tool. And the reason we're working this way is I want to create a horizontal guide and a vertical guide that are exactly centered. So the vertical guide is going to be at the exact center of the artboard, whereas the horizontal guide is going to be centered between the top of the document and that very special ruler guide that we created in the previous movie. And so what you want to do if you're working along with me is click and hold on the line tool and select the rectangular grid tool from the flyout menu. And by the way, you want to make sure that your smart guides under the view menu are turned on. So we want to start dragging from the top left corner of the artboard. Or if you're more comfortable, you can start from the top right. And then drag down like so until you snap into alignment with that 500 point ruler guide. And if you take a look at that tiny heads up display down into the right of my cursor, you can see that the width of this polar grid thing that I'm drawing is 800 points and the height is 500 points. So in other words, we got that guideline exactly where we wanted it. And now I'll release, and I can see that I've got a ton of lines. Yes, I've got this line that represents the exact vertical center. And I guess this guy here represents the center horizontal guideline at 250 points. But we have all these extra lines as well, and that's no good. So go ahead and press the backspace key or the delete key on the Mac to get rid of it. It may seem that we've wasted a bunch of time here, but we haven't because notice if you move your cursor to the top left corner of the artboard and click, you'll bring up this big rectangular grid tool options dialog box. And it already knows that you want to create something that's going to be 800 points wide and 500 points tall. And that's because all of Illustrator's line tools and shape tools remember the last thing you did. That's a very common thing throughout Illustrator, in fact. And now we can just define how many dividers we want, which is one, right? We want one horizontal divider in the middle, and then we want one vertical divider in the middle of the entire artboard. And these two checkboxes down here are just fine as is. So now click OK, and we have exactly the shape we're looking for. So we've got a rectangle around the outside, which is fine. And then we have a horizontal line and a vertical line right through the center. All right, so that's one way to work is just to click. Anytime you click with one of the line or shape tools, you're going to bring up a dialog box that allows you to work by the numbers. But here's another way to make changes on the fly. Go ahead and press the backspace key or the delete key on the Mac. And you know, we want to be working on the guides layer, by the way, here inside the layers panel. That way we can keep all of our guides together. And now I'll drag from the upper left corner of the artboard down until I snap into alignment with the intersection of that 500 point horizontal guide and the right edge of the artboard. And now, as long as you keep your mouse button down, you can add and subtract divider lines. So for example, if I press the up arrow key, I'm adding horizontal divider lines. If I press the down arrow key, I'm getting rid of them. If I press the right arrow key, I'm adding vertical divider lines. And if I press the left arrow key, I'm subtracting them. What I want is just a single vertical line, as you see here, and a single horizontal line as well. You can get rid of them entirely if you go too far, by the way, as I have here. So I don't have any divider lines whatsoever, which means I need to press the up arrow key to create a horizontal line and the right arrow key to create a vertical line. And then I'll move my cursor back down until it snaps into alignment there. I can tell it's right because I've got a width of 800 points and a height of 500 points, at which point I will release. Then, of course, we want to turn that thing into guidelines. And you do that by going up to the View menu, choosing Guides, and choosing Make Guides. Or you can press Control-5 or Command-5 on the Mac. I just couldn't help myself. Anyway, that ends up creating those non-printing snapping guides right there. In any event, that's how you create custom guides using the rectangular grid tool. In the next movie, we'll begin to draw the heart using the arc tool.